It's Monday. What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm Alexandra Harbushka. I'm founder of Life with Herpes, founder of the Secret Society Wellness Products. I have had herpes since 2003. I've been living uh, with HSV-1 since 2003 and HSV-2 since 2011. So I've had it for a very long time. I have lived with it, dealt with it, had the outbreaks, had all the all the emotions that go with it, whether it's heartbreak, whether it's disclosing to a partner, whether it's dealing with this outbreak, how do I get rid of it? I've had all sorts of things that I've dealt with. So last time we went live, you guys were asking me a ton of questions about supplements and types of supplements that will support herpes outbreaks, that will support... Hey there, where are you guys joining me from, by the way? I'm in Las Vegas. Um, but you guys were asking me like like uh, questions about supplements. How do I prevent this? How do I prevent the? How do I extend the time in between outbreaks? Texas, is there a medication for herpes that helps? So let's definitely talk about that. Um, so first of all, let's. I just want to talk about what herpes is and what herpes isn't. Right. So Tennessee, awesome. So herpes is herpes simplex virus. It is, um, there's HSV-1 and HSV-2. HSV-1 is most commonly known as oral herpes and HSV-2 is most commonly known as genital herpes. However, with that being said, it doesn't really matter. It can go either way, it can go either direction. So a lot of times right now, we're seeing a lot of people being diagnosed with genital HSV-1. In fact, today on our support group call, which is the call that we have, uh, uh, every Monday, we have uh, AM and PM calls. I had a handful of people, I had an emergency call with someone today also that got HSV-1 genitally. So it's very, very, very common now to get genital HSV-1. Okay, but with that being said, how do we get outbreak? How do we prevent outbreaks? Will they go away? Is there a cure? All that. So unfortunately, at this point in time, there is no cure. At this point, we have viruses, we cannot eradicate them from our bodies. Once we have a virus, it'll be in our body forever. With that being said, there are ways, there are methods that we can potentially suppress the virus or keep it out of replication mode. So kind of the first method that is FDA approved, that is most common when you are diagnosed is you are prescribed uh, Valtrex. So you're prescribed Valtrex, Valcyclovir, Acyclovir. That is the FDA drug. It's an antiviral that is proven to keep the virus dormant. So um, it lowers the transmission rate by 48%. And what it does is it keeps it dormant. So um, like I said, Valtrex is the, is the branded. It is the original Valtrex. And then the generic, which would be Valcyclovir, Acyclovir, are also an option. Typically, um, uh, the generic are a little bit cheaper. Valtrex might be a little bit expensive. So why would you be prescribed one or the other? It might be, it might be your doctor, it might be your insurance, things like that. I do encourage you if you are taking the antivirals, first of all, talk to your doctor before you take them. Find out, is it, is it the best thing for you? What works for you and you specifically? I'm not a doctor. I cannot give medical advice or recommend things for you to do for your body, definitely go do your own research. But typically what is prescribed or what is recommended is if you are taking it daily, you would take the 500 milligrams daily and then the um, you would take a thousand milligrams, so 500 in the morning and 500 in the evening for well, if you have an outbreak. Again, every prescription is different. Doctors may prescribe it a little differently. I've seen some doctors prescribe a total of 1,200 milligrams, so it is a 400 milligram tablet three times a day. It's different for everybody. Some doctors in different countries will prescribe it for five days. I've seen other people say like, here's a box, here's here's a month's worth. Again, it's very different per person and per prescriber. So if you have questions, definitely go ask them. If getting diagnosed or getting a prescription is something that is important to you, again, um, talk to your doctor. You can go to your doctor. You can go um, to the Minute Clinic. I personally recommend Herp Alert. They're an online telehealth company. The best way, you would just go to herpalert.com, use the promo code LIFEWITHHERPES, 
and they will set you up um, and you will meet with doctors and you can talk with doctors and it's all via telehealth. So really cool opportunity to do that. If you guys are just joining and you're like, what are we talking about? We're talking about herpes. I know it's not a sexy topic. It's not like a, it's a very taboo topic. The reason why I'm talking about it is it's something that I was diagnosed with. And when I got oral herpes, it wasn't that big of a deal. When I got genital herpes, it was crushing absolutely crushing and I don't want anybody to feel that way I don't want anybody to be crushed I don't want anybody to impair their life because they're diagnosed with a virus that 80% of the population has so yeah 80% of the population has herpes and that's what's really frustrating so um, keep asking your questions guys I will get to them and I will answer them and I I, that's why I'm here. I go live to answer your questions and support you. If you have something specific, you can always book an emergency call. It's linked in my bio. You can do that and we can do a one-on-one -on -one call. Can I explain shedding? Yes. So just like any, I'm like looking around, just like any living organism, I always use this example. Um, you know, leaves drop, uh, leaves drop their trees. Trees drop their leaves. Um, you know, flowers lose their petals, um, animals shed their fur. If I were to put my hands through my hair, I'd probably get a hair. I got some hair out, you know, you can see it. Um, I scratch my arm, my cell particles come off. So a virus is the same way. It sheds just like we do. It, it wants to get rid of its excess DNA, it wants to get rid of its excess waste. So what happens when that happens is the virus then Part of it, the shedding, comes out of the dormancy and pops up to the surface of the skin. When that happens, it's asymptomatic. There's no signs, there's no symptoms, there's no tingle, there's no itch, there's no bump, there's no lesion, there's no cut, there's nothing. So us being the host in this virus, we have no idea when that happens. And when that does happen, we are contagious. So that's why it's really, really crucial and really, really important to disclose to our partners. We think that like if I just if I don't have an outbreak, we're all good. Well, unfortunately, 70% of transmissions actually occur without an outbreak, and it's because of the viral shedding. So that's something to definitely remember. Uh, why why am I so pretty? Well, thank you. I appreciate that because today I went to get Botox because like I'm in need of it, and then I freaked out and I left. I wanted to get Botox so bad and I freaked out because I'm still breastfeeding and I was like oh my gosh what if it like hurts the baby and I freaked out so I left. Uh, Valacyclovir is an antiviral drug that's prescribed for herpes. It's, it's prescribed to um, keep the herpes virus dormant. What are the causes of herpes? Herpes is a skin-to-skin -skin transmission. It's a, it's a, skin, it's a skin disease. Um, we get it through touching other people that we care about or are in contact with. So we can get it from kissing, we can get it from having sex, we can get it from doing things with our mouth. Um, there's a lot of ways we can get it. I'm smoking hot, well thank you. You, just, you guys made my day. Um, do I have kids? I do. I have a little boy. He's two. He's my world. He's my absolute world. I have a little boy. Is, there, um, is it in the specific area for shedding or all over your body? That's a great question. So when you have viral shedding, it's not all over your body. It is in the specific area that you would have herpes. So if I have oral herpes, it would be orally. It's not going to be like on my elbow, right? Um, so it's in that area. Okay, so back to types of supplements and things that we can do. Someone mentioned earlier lysine, and that is really helpful. So let's talk a little bit about arginine and lysine. So arginine and lysine are essential amino acids, meaning that they're proteins that our body need to consume to live a life. Um, high arginine foods are things like uh, nuts, peanuts, caffeine, or like the coffee bean, um, I'm trying to think sugar is not good for us. So high arginine foods are of that nature. Process, pastas, processed foods are not good. They don't help our immune system as well. On the flip side, we have lysine foods that are high in that lysine, which would be uh, shellfish, which would be dairy, which would be, um, you know, we have some fruits and vegetables in there. We have potatoes, eggs. Those are all high in lysine. So what are arginine and lysine? 
Um, they're important for the building blocks of our muscles. They're important for cardiovascular health. They're important for tendon health. They do a lot for us. We need to consume them. The thing with the herpes virus that is so fascinating is that arginine fuels the herpes virus, so it allows it to replicate, it keeps it in replication mode. Meanwhile, lysine actually suffocates it. So lysine um, prevents it, prevents the arginine from helping it replicate. So with that being said, you're like, okay, where are we getting with these supplements? Taking lysine and taking lysine supplements can be extremely helpful with, with preventing replication, with preventing outbreaks, um, potentially preventing shedding, and even you know a, a trickle effect of preventing transmission, right? So it's not, the best way to prevent transmission would be on the antiviral drug, but again, these are things to consider when we're talking about this. Um, and talking about taking supplements. I need to make this longer. There we go. So I like to take lysine. I did not take it when I was pregnant, FYI. Um, and lysine, oops, lysine is, wait, did I do that right? It's not, I'm not doing this right, guys, sorry. There we go. Now we're at eye level. There we go. Um, lysine is a supplement you can get. I take this daily. I use Palmera Health right here. Oh, that's Monolorin. Here's the lysine. They look the same. Um, this is the lysine I take daily. It's just a little white pill. Um, it's recommended that obviously talk to your doctor to find out, but typically most people take a thousand milligrams a day uh, just to prevent just maintenance health. And then when they have outbreaks, they take about 3000 milligrams a day. So by increasing the lysine in your diet, whether you're gonna take supplements or you're gonna increase the foods in your diet, that's an excellent way to help uh, speed up the, the, speed up the, 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 what am I trying to say? to speed up the healing process of a herpes outbreak. It also is great in preventing herpes outbreaks. So that's personally what I use, and I can't say enough great things about it. And these are totally affordable. Um, they're not like ridiculously priced. So do you take antivirals too? I do not take antivirals. I um, have taken them in the past. I took them when I was first diagnosed. I've taken them here and there. I've been, there's been seasons in my life when it's been really important for me to take them. Whether it was like my honeymoon, I didn't want to get an outbreak. My wedding, I, I actually did have an outbreak on my wedding. I had an oral outbreak on my wedding. Awesome. Um, but in general, I don't, I, um, I do not take them daily as a prophylactic. I did take them at the final when I was pregnant so I could have a vaginal birth. What are the side effects of taking lysine? Um, you know, it's a protein, so I didn't take it when I was pregnant because there were no studies, but it's a protein. Um, just like anything, you know, you want to take everything in moderation. Like, you don't want to eat, like, too many apples, right? I don't know what that would do, but there could be a side effect of too many apples. I don't know. So you definitely, if you do have questions, ask your doctor. But um, it is, our body needs it. It's something that is essential. Our body needs it. It is a protein that our body needs. Uh, you're going you're gonna to starve now with all your favorite pistachios and almonds. Okay, so here's the thing. I just mentioned these are foods that are high in lysine or sorry, high in arginine, nuts, chocolate. Okay, oh, I put the, I had chocolate on my desk. Um, look at it, see what, see what happens. Is it causing you outbreaks? If you're someone that's like, I get one outbreak a year and I drink three Starbucks a day, then I'd be like, dude, you're fine. If you're getting multiple outbreaks and you're like, yeah, I didn't realize I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every single day or I have, ants on a log every single day or I put peanut butter in my smoothie every single morning and I'm getting outbreaks every single day, then you might realize like, wow, okay, let me look at this and say, maybe I cut back the peanut butter. Maybe if I switch to almond butter, would that help? So again, these are all, these are all things just to be aware of. It doesn't mean you can never have nuts again. It doesn't mean you never have chocolate, never have coffee. It just means be aware. Maybe you can teeter totter and cut back on some things. Um, and especially if you have outbreaks, you're like, okay, I feel it coming on. A lot of people are like, it's sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar is what triggers it for a lot of people. And they're like, okay, I realize that. 
and I'm either gonna make the conscious choice to have it or make the conscious choice not to. Like I said, um, like chocolate cake or like a, a chocolate peanut butter cake would be like guaranteed. There's times I make that choice to eat it, whether it's my birthday, whether it's my husband's birthday, whether it's Christmas or whatever, or I'm at Susie Cakes. Those of you that are Southern California people, Susie Cakes is worth it. It might be worth the outbreak. Like you just have to make that choice. I know the answer for myself, your aim systematic you're asymptomatic. So, okay, cool. So it's awesome that you're asymptomatic. There's so many people that are jealous of you for being asymptomatic. Um, so that's awesome. Do you need to take lysine daily? I would say ask yourself if you're not getting I lysine is there to help prevent the replication of the virus. If your virus is not replicating and you're not getting outbreaks, then it sounds like you're in a good spot. Some reasons why I might consider it is what about a partner? Are you, um, you know, does your partner have herpes? Yes or no. Um, taking it would, of course, be an extra layer of preventing transmission. It's an extra layer of preventative. It doesn't ensure it. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just means it's just an extra little, just little speed bump to keep us from, from transmitting it. So I would look at that. Um, I would also look at it, I guess that was it. I would just look at a partner. Does your partner have it and what are you doing to prevent outbreaks to your partner? So do you take antivirals too? I just answered that. No, I do not. Ooh, I got lots of new messages. Drinking, what about, okay, wait, wait, wait. I gotta go back. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Tyra. I appreciate that. Is beer bad and get more outbreaks? It's totally your body. Like, there's nothing wrong with having a beer. There's nothing wrong with going out with your friends and having a couple beers. Does it break down uh, your immune system? Yeah, like alcohol lowers your immune system. So if your body's already working hard, that's probably not the best thing for it. But if this is something that you're like, I have a beer every single day, go for it. And if you're not getting outbreaks, go for it. If you are getting lots of outbreaks, look at it and go, wow, I didn't realize this was causing outbreaks. Do you have a hard time doing the deed because of fear of passing it? I don't. Um, definitely not at this point. My husband and I have been together, I think it's eight years. I, we've, it'll be married, well, we've been married four. We're almost at five years. Um, and I think we've been together eight years. I do not, and here's three reasons why. Number one, um, that, well, Three reasons, three ways to help with this fear of transmission. Number one is the person you're with over the age of 18. So is this person able to make their his or her, her own decision? Number two, um, is this person competent? Is this person able to make like their own medical choices? And number three, when you have the disclosure, when you're discussing this, are you not on drugs and not on alcohol? Like you're not under the influence of anything. If that is the case and you have this healthy uh, responsible, grounded conversation about sexual health and the person is consensual, then it's his or her own choice now to move forward. So again, it's really important about having healthy conversations. I have committed to my husband that like, if I feel something coming on, I will communicate that with him. I've committed, you know, we, we are on the same page of what we're doing to prevent transmission. Um, so that's, that's all I can do. Drinking, as far as alcohol or water, I would say more water the better. For alcohol, that's totally up to you. Um, I enjoy wine. I think it's great. I enjoy it. Like I think I love the taste of wine. Um, do I? I don't sleep as well when I have wine, so that also is a big contributor. I still have my almonds and pistachios. I would do it. Herpes never hurt nobody. Um, yeah, no, it's it's just an annoying blister. How often do I find myself having flare-ups? So HSV-1 oral is not very often. Um, I've had four in 19 years, so that's not very often. Genital, I do struggle with that. Um, I'm currently getting over one right now. I go in seasons with it. I've learned that when I don't take my supplements, like lysine, like monolaurin, if I don't take them, I was out for a while. If I don't take my vitamin B, D, zinc, um, all that, then then yeah, my body definitely 
breaks down and I get outbreaks. It's when I'm consistent with eating right, sleeping, and taking, most importantly, the lysine and monolaurin combined is when I my immune system works really well. Is it possible that my antivirals are making symptoms worse? I would say no. If you are questioning your antivirals, definitely talk to your doctor. You can always switch. There's Valtrex, Valcyclovir, or Acyclovir. You can always switch and look at it. You know, is there a different one? Um, selfish? Am I selfish? Um, you don't get outbreaks. However, I get the flu-like symptoms. It's horrible. Yeah, flu-like symptoms are kind of a prodrome. It's kind of a precursor. It's a symptom of the outbreaks. How different is HSV-1 genital? So personally, I don't have genital HSV-1. I have oral HSV-1. Um, but herpes is herpes. It's going to be different in everybody. What's the difference? There really is no difference between the different... Like herpes is herpes. It looks the same, acts the same, does the same thing. Um, oral or HSV-1, they both they all live in our spinal cord. HSV-1 kind of lives in like this neck, jaw area. HSV-2 kind of lives in the, um, the like back the lower back area. I'm trying to think the like this area. I don't, I might, I've had a lot of calls today, this area right here. So um, that's just kind of where they live in our bodies. Um, so that is that. All right, I didn't talk about monolaurin and I'm gonna talk about that quick and I can hear my little boy, he's like, mommy, monolaurin is also, it's called lauric acid. It's, it's, it's really important for our babies. It's what's found in human breast milk. It's what keeps babies um, from getting sick. So what it does is lauric acid has the ability to break down the enveloped viruses and break that outer shell so that our immune system can go in and do what it needs to do. The herpes virus is an enveloped virus. So taking this helps break it down. Taking this helps prevent like, uh, the replication. Taking them together is extremely powerful. There's lots of studies out and it's extremely powerful for us, people like us living with herpes. I do have it linked if you'd like to check it out. Um, you can order some, you get 10% off. Hey, I take it daily. It's it's the bomb.com. Um, so if you guys don't have any more quick last minute questions, I'm gonna say adios and I will see you tomorrow. And I am going to, I'm gonna go be a mommy right now. All right guys, I'll see you soon. Have an awesome rest of your Monday. I'm so glad like, my Monday is coming to an end. Mondays are my, whew, anyone else have long? <sighs> Mondays, Mondays are just like my day. Have a great day, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Is is that both in men and women, Lauric? So Lauric acid is for, women produce it um, in their breast milk for their babies. So if you were a breastfed baby, you would have rece received it. Um, and it's also in coconuts and like hearts of palm. So yeah, both men and women can take it. It's, it's great. So many great benefits. All right, have a great day, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Keep asking your questions and I will answer them. Bye.